Welcome to Libel the Bible. I'm uh, Rusty. I am Scott with the high, high heels and the high, high standards. I mean, that's just a fancy way of saying you're a fucking white oppressor, Scott. White oppressor? A white oppressor. Yes, from my my my, my, uh, my tower up high here as I look down upon my minions I'm oppressing. Yes. Yes. This is the pinnacle of white supremacy right here. Well, it's your problem. If you couldn't use your white privilege being born on third base... What? To get home. Being born on third base? Yes, that's a phrase. You never heard that phrase? Being born on third more, base? I guess. You know what? Maybe I don't have to get out more. Okay, that's so kind of shit that's let's going say, around. Let's say for the sake of argument, you haven't heard it. Okay. Which you 100% have heard that phrase. I don't think you I have. You understand the context of what it means to be born I can by way when you say that. I'm closer okay. to home than people less privileged okay, cause, than my Because you, you made it seem like I never you heard didn't understand before. what I, I was just, saying. I never heard it, though. Okay. You say third base, I'm thinking that means grabbing some booty or something well, back Well, that's in the day. because you're a white oppressor. <laughs> 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 it's, see, Scott, it all comes back. Somehow I don't think I can even win this argument. It all Since I don't know what the argument is. To white oppression. Uh, yeah. yeah, speaking of uh, um, white, white oppression, oppression. <laughs> well, actually, I'm not. My uh, my brother. Why not? Got, Everyone else is. My brother-in-law got a funny shock, right? So uh, my brother-in-law is married to my sister because uh, you know you have to clarify things like that these days. Um, well, you don't have to clarify. None of your fucking business. He's my fucking brother-in-law. He's married to someone in my that's a sibling of mine, right? Um, someone who identifies as your sister. Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, always claimed to be an Irish guy his whole life. Oh, I'm Irish this, Irish that. Like his uh, his family crest is on the wall. So he like did a not ancestry DNA, like a twenty maybe twenty one of me, twenty three of me, twenty three of me. And my and, and my sister was like, oh my god, his DNA results back. He couldn't believe he's part Jewish. I was like. Yo, everyone's part Jewish. Like, if you're from per- part something, part right. something, right, right. But what does that mean, Wait, part Jewish? Is there a genet? Is there a Jewish well, this, gene? I've always asked you this. It, it's it, it always comes up as Ashkenazi. Ashkenazi. Ash- Ash- All right. Ashkenazi. The, the look of disgust on Rusty's face it's just not, now. <laughs> it's it's not that. It's because <laughs> it's because. I know you know the term. I don't know. I don't see it in, we're in, in, in writing enough to you like, realize. You haven't heard it? I, no. Say it again. You ha- Ashkenazi. Ashkenazi, yeah. I don't you hear it enough to it. remember it, man. That I've heard. Sometimes like you'll say things for effect, but like the look on your face denotes <laughs> like you don't know, like you've never heard of such a thing. That's what it is. That's the frustrating part that I know you know it. Third base. Go ahead. Um... So she's like, no, 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 no. He's forty eight percent. Oh shit, he's half Jew, bro. <laughs> like you're half, you're like half yeah, Jewish. Yeah, he's half Jewish. Yeah, fake ass wannabe Irishman. Who's uh, uh, which side is he uh, Jewish on? You know, his family's kind of hard to follow. I mean, so what, I don't know. What, but wait a second, I'm sorry. There are no Jews in Ireland. There are Jews in Ireland. Forty eight percent Jewish. What do you mean 48%? I'm not saying Ireland is filled with 48% Jews. I'm saying all it took was one of his parents to be Jewish. Hey, but you said it like there's, there's Jews in Ireland. Like There's a lot of a big, big Jewish population in Ireland. Is there? I don't know. I don't know. No, oh, there's no big Jewish population anywhere because they were killed everywhere they went. So there is no big okay, Rusty Jewish hasn't, population. Rusty hasn't been to Brooklyn recently. <laughs> So, I mean, there's Jews in Ireland. Yeah. Just be, He could be Irish and Jewish at the same time. I could be an American and Jewish, right? Yeah, sure. Or no. Sure. Are we not allowing Jews <laughs> not, nationalities? Not, not in the America that's starting to form. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to get into that. <laughs> Wait, what, you going to get into that? <laughs> get, well, again, with the white oppressive, yeah. like, rape language. So so it's, re- it's really funny that, uh, you know, that he found this out because now— He's disappointed. So th- is he uh, upset? I haven't spoken to him personally yet. I heard it through my uh, my sibling. Is he anti-Semitic? Um, no, no, not at all. Not listen. I'm not saying is he like w- hood wearing anti-Semitic, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. No, like, I don't think I've never heard him say anything okay. like bizarre. Um, He's never tried to like Jew you down or you know. Like, what does that mean? Jew you down? I don't know what that means, man. That's the face where I know exactly what you're saying, but I want you to say it. Oh, uh, okay. <clears throat> Jew you down is when you. Uh, basically uh, accuse someone of trying to bargain with you and like drive the price of something down because you know Jews love them some money. So you think unlike other <laughs> unlike other people who hate money, who who just willingly give away money. By the way, in New York City, every single goddamn endowment and building was fucking built by Jews. Hmm. All right. Well, let's just say that. Yeah, I don't know what side you're on with this argument right now. 
<laughs> but it's funny because now, now I'm I don't know calling on my people to rise. S- since you since you have uh, explained to me how where being anti-Semitic and anti-Jewish could ma- it makes you a racist because there is a racial component to it at this point. Um, I don't know if this is this is a uh, racist, but already people in my family like s- sent them dreidels and shit. <laughs> like, like just like, that seems racist to me. I mean, it's, it's a, a joke. It's, it's, it's I a get joke. it. Yeah, it's a joke. A lot of times, you, you know, racism is ignorance. Yeah. So I don't blame your family. They're just <laughs> ignorant. <laughs> just a bunch of ignorant. Yeah. Right, so that was the interesting development in um, something that doesn't affect me at all. Your dad grew up in an Irish neighborhood, right? Um, It was a white neighborhood. It wasn't Irish? It was, it was working probably, class. It was working class. Yeah. Work, uh, like lower. Like his father was a, like a low paid factory worker. But not Irish? Um, I would say it was half. It was half, probably half and half. It was Irish and like English, some Polish. Really? English yeah. and Polish. Yeah. Okay. That's, but, uh, that's a weird yeah. mix. I guess. Right. Well, um, I did want to discuss one thing at the very beginning of the show. Mm. Okay? I mean, okay. we've covered the Ashkenazi topic. <laughs> we've covered your family's genealogy. <laughs> your ignorance of, like, what third base means, <laughs> metaphorically speaking. Yeah. Um, our Patreon page. I would just like to let our listeners know that we have... A Patreon page. Every once in a while, um, we do put in an ad for it. You know, like halfway through this episode, they'll hear like a little ad for it. Mm -hmm. Not even an ad, just us like directing them to it. But this is more a call to action where I am going to ask. Now, I understand everybody can't, you know, afford an extra $5 a month. I understand not everybody wants to pay an extra $5 $5 a month. Mm. But I will say, if you are of means to do so, and you do enjoy listening to our show, um, we put out an episode every week. We've, every week. We've done so now for 60. This is this we're recording our 66th episode or 65th episode. Uh, yeah, I think One of those. Yeah, Maybe whatever, even whatever more is, because man. we have episodes that we didn't even like number. The lost episodes. Yeah, like our highlights, our specials. Stuff on the cutting room floor here. But in any event, we release weekly. We've released. <laughs> well, <laughs> that kind of release is almost <laughs> hourly <laughs> for some of us. <laughs> I'm releasing right now. <laughs> um, we start doing this at your apartment. <laughs> I mean, if you break it down, uh, we release four to five episodes a month, right? If there's four Tuesdays, then it's four episodes. If it's five Tuesdays, then it's five episodes. Yeah. We release, I can't say weekly Patreon, but I would say almost weekly Patreon, full-length, hour-long episodes um, where we discuss uh, the intersection of religion and culture. Uh, society. Society and, and, and culture. I, I, and I hate to do this, but I prefer you say society first. Okay. Why do you hate to do that? I don't mind. I don't mind being corrected. I'm not so sensitive. Yeah, listen, you're not being corrected. It's just the way it should be. It's the way it should be. I mean, I'm sensitive, but about certain things. Not not that. All right. I'm I'm willing to grow and learn. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah. So, again, so I would like to ask those in our audience who do enjoy the show, if you really think about it and break it up between Patreon and our regular show's content, you get about nine or ten episodes. Each episode is about an hour 15 to an hour and a half long. That's, you know, that's 12 to 15 hours of content a month. Right? Yeah. You even, Are you getting that much from your Netflix subscription? Probably not. You ain't watching 15 hours of Netflix. So, again, it's we're talking about maybe 50 cents per show that you listen to between the two, between Patreon and between our show proper, mm. you know. You're telling me if you're a listener of our show making your way through our catalog, you wouldn't pay 50 cents once a week on a Tuesday to listen to us? So, please, if you have the means and you liked our show, head on over to patreon.com slash libelthebible.com and join our Patreon. We have one tier. You get everything that we put out on Patreon, exclusive content. And, by the way, if you, if you can't pay the $5 a month, Head on over to Patreon anyway. I have a question up 
for our fans, all of our fans. It's open to all of our listeners. Fans, that's a weird thing to say. It's stupid. It's hyperbolic. Anyone who's listening to us, right? Let's not even call them fans. I put up a question asking you about like our show, what you would like to hear. Like, leave a comment. We I I don't know about Scott. You can follow up. I emotionally need to hear from our listeners. Because every time someone reaches out to us, which they used to more than they have lately, and they let us know, like, they enjoy the show or they found something funny, like, that gives me, like, an extra two, three months of, like, motivation. Like, just one comment. You know what I mean? Uh, We haven't received any of those lately. I need to know, like, from fans or listeners, like, what what is... What are you listening to? What do you enjoy? What do you not enjoy? Do you enjoy the beginning of our episodes? Do you enjoy the Bible part of the... What the fuck do you like about the show? What the fuck are you listening for? Let us know, man. Man. So we can give you more of that shit, not less of the other shit. That's what I'm saying, man. You know, help us improve. And listen, in all seriousness, Rusty's emotional needs have to be met. (laughs) Because (laughs) if they're not met, I I, I bear the brunt of that shit. (laughs) He's laughing now. He's in a good mood right now. Uh. I'm like the kid in the Twilight Zone movie, right? That has his whole family held hostage. Yeah, but you're, 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 you're much better than that kid, Rusty. You're much better. We like you a hell of a That's lot more right. than that kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You would never abuse your powers in such a way, Rusty. You know the lady that he sort of like befriended and that became the mother figure. She was the witch in the Doors movie. She was Patricia Keneally. You're Patricia Keneally? Remember, he was like, Jim Morrison, like, danced around with her and, like... Did, didn't didn't his wife go, you suck your dick in this woman or <laughs> something like that? Yes. Yeah, it was pretty funny. Was funny Patricia line. Keneally. That's when she was like, Patricia? Patricia Keneally? You're Patricia Keneally? Mm. And that's when she was like, you suck your dick in this woman? Mm. And he's like, sometimes. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's Janice just, Rossi. Because he, he's too awesome. Awesome. <laughs> What? You have a whore living in your building. Oh, that's great. Good fellas, that's right. <laughs> Uh, uh, good, good yeah. stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. So, on a personal level, I have had a busy weekend. Oh, yeah. Uh, took my son, my wife, myself, my son, who I met to Madison Square Garden Friday night uh, for his first concert. This. Look at my first talk point, man. My first talk point. Shutting down. Oh, what the fuck just happened? Oh, <laughs> Scott, I hit the power button. Scott picked up his computer to turn it around and show me, and it. All right. Well, down. it said Muse concert. All right, man. Nice to think of me. I appreciate that. Yes. Yeah, so we went to see Muse. Um, kid loved it. Every song that he wanted to hear, they played, which is primarily like the newer stuff. He likes their like latest album. So we got to hear that. That was a really good concert. Um, Muse is always great live. Do you like their newer stuff also? I do. I like their newer stuff. Gotcha. With Muse, I tend to find that after like their fifth or sixth album, I like their I like the album more a year or two later because mm. they are a little bit ahead of their time and you're so used to their earlier stuff and they do t- change up like their styles from they keep evolving. Mm. Um, so it takes like a year for me to catch up with where they're at. You're gonna be one of the pretentious douches when somebody goes, "Hey, you like Muse?" and you go, "I like their earlier work." <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. I'm not one of those pretentious douches. But listen, I get it. Like, if you Ah, fall in love with a certain style of music, that's what you want to continue to hear. Of course. Whereas I am sort of like, I'm on their wavelength. I'm growing with them. You know, like, I'm almost, I'm basically the same age as they are. So as they get older, their musical tastes, like, develop and change. And so have mine. So I've been with them on this whole journey. And uh, long story short, yes, I do. Their latest album has a lot of really good songs on it. Some hard rock and, like, kick-ass songs so you've listened to a lot of their music you enjoy their music you've liked different aspects of their music and you have made it known by taking your family paying your hard-earned money which we have very little of i support to, to support yes. them See? and you know what else i did See? you know what else i did scott when radiohead released in rainbows as a pay what you want download you know what i did i took, paid for it took that shit for free oh no, what no. <laughs> I, I i paid what a cd would cost nice good for you, because man. it was radiohead and they didn't need my money by the way oh, they, they would have put out that record and they would have put out a hundred other records without my money because they had enough hey and that's what we're doing with this content pay what you feel pay what you want yeah. 
Yes. And hopefully some of you will want to pay. <laughs> Feel something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, really. Yeah. Hmm. So that was uh, Friday night. Then Saturday morning, we woke up like early to take my kid to ice hockey. He spent two hours there from 9 until 11. We rushed home. We ate. And then he started a roller hockey league his first game was at 2 o'clock. Look at that. So he played a game. He wound up being double shifted because one kid didn't show up to the first game. Like, kind of fucking parents sign up their kid for, like, a league. And then the first fucking league match, you're like, oh, we, we're not going to be there today. Because yeah, we have something more important. Than that. I don't fucking know. losers. And then They another... were trying to appease their child at the moment. All right, we'll sign you up for the league. And then the kid probably didn't want to fucking go. Yeah. Don't blame the parents. Blame the kid. Now nah, fuck all of them. Yeah, fuck fuck all the parents. Right. Fuck the kids. Drag that fucking kid over there. Then another kid got hurt during the game. This is why we have no seven-year-old listeners, because we're attacking the children. <laughs> My kid wound up having to be double shifted. So he played like double shift. They played three 12-minute periods with stoppages. Like every like there was stoppages in the clock. Like usually For it's the just fights. it's just running time, like in kids' leagues. Yeah. No, not here. No, not fights. There's no fucking fights, Scott. It's eight year olds. Oh, right. <laughs> Still hockey. I'm not no, I'm not sending my kid to a league where there's fighting. Yeah, Unless right. my kid's getting paid. He's not fighting. What's gonna He's happen? He's not with, in a league. What, with what, what happens when he has an inter league fucking play with some league that does fight? Well then I'm gonna be fucking <laughs> beating up eight year olds. <laughs> So he did that. He was pretty exhausted by that. Um, you found something to wear that kid out finally? <laughs> and then uh, this morning, he was exhausted, but we dragged him out to play some more hockey. Nice, nice. So we played some hockey this morning. So I was just tired from like running around and doing like a whole bunch of things. And then today, playing some hockey, that tired me out a little. So I'm like, you know, a tired toddler right now, ready for a nap. So you're at the garden for St. Patty's Day. So that's another thing that I realized <laughs> that I was taking my eight-year-old to his first concert on the Long Island Railroad, which is often called the Vomit Comet. I was going to say, did you stop? Cause I don't know how the new Penn Station is, but there used to be an Irish bar in Penn Station that was like always famous for like going to before hockey games and everything. Yeah. Remember the name of it? It's like a hula hands or something. Inside yeah, of yeah, yeah. Madison Square Garden, yes, there was a hula. No, 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 not, not inside, inside Penn Station. Inside Penn Station, yeah, I'm yeah. sorry, yes, there was a hula hands. Yeah. There's like a lot of bars around MSG mm. that like people go to. Yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> McSorley's. That's not the other garden. Yeah, there is one. McSorley's Ale House? Oh, that's in the West Village. I didn't say McSorley's the Ale House. There's like oh, a McSorley's. It's like there. a fake ass McSorley's then. Fuck that. Hey, I didn't name some. I don't know can't name your shit a McSorley's. That's no, like the famous, like one of the most totally famous. Totally uncommon. <laughs> uncommon name, McSorley's. <laughs> Whatevs. All right, so good for you, man. Yeah. Good for you. I was, uh, I, was at a, I was at a pub, shockingly, on St. Paddy's Day. Oh, no. Uh, really? So, uh, in my old neighborhood, and uh, I just started talking to this guy. He, he liked my hat. So we started talking. I'm like, dude, man, you look familiar. And he goes, yeah, we started, you know, talking about where we're from, what neighborhood we're from, and he told me his name. He was like, his name was Sean. So I was like, not Sean, blah, blah, blah. And he goes, yeah, who are you? And I told him who I was, and uh, he introduced me to the f- friend he was with, and she was, she lived right up on the corner from me. I was like, I know your brothers, blah, blah, blah. So I was like, yo, man, Sean, let me ask you this, man. Didn't you go away for some some, some serious time? He goes, yo, yo, man, 18 banks I robbed. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> I'll show you pictures. Guy, you might know the guy. I mean, the he guy's successful. So I mean, he was he had the opportunity to rob eighteen banks he before he was caught. Eighteen banks, yeah, blew all the money. He was he was high on crack at half the time. Nice. He's fucked up. He's, nice. he's, like, he's like kind of straight now. Yeah. You know, he did his time, but uh, interesting story. You think I've met him? He, did, you know what? He, probably, he was probably in prison the whole time we were hanging back in that neighborhood okay. when you were there. So he was probably in prison at the time. But no, so maybe you didn't. Was he friends with people that used to hang out at? One of the parks in your neighborhood? No, but you know the whole crew that was up on the corner? Yes. Right there? Yeah, he knew all okay. those crews. He knew the guys that the, 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 the ones we played like football with yeah, yeah, and yeah, like yeah, all yeah, those yeah. guys. I got it. They were a little older than us, right? They yeah, were like yeah. three, four years yeah. older than us. Yeah. So like if we were 17, they were like in their early 20s. Yeah. 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 Come to find out he dated one, one of my sisters too. That was funny. Right. That's how Of course. <laughs> dated. <laughs> dated is like a nice term for it probably. Yeah, yeah, probably. So yeah, it was interesting. Eh, that's all I did. Yeah. Did you see what Paris did? <laughs> the people of Paris? Did you see what they did? Are they, I I just saw a blurb before I got we got on. They're rioting. They're burning their fucking shit down. They're, they're burning try- the whole goddamn... Because fucking- they're trying to raise the retirement age, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what? Fuck it. Burn the fucking thing they're down. They're not trying to. Fucking ridiculous. Apparently, French Parliament 
I think they have a parliament. I'm not sure. I think yes. The French parliament overruled raising the retirement age from 62 to 64. Fucking crazy. But their president, Mark Ma- Macron. So we liked him. He. What? I thought people liked him. You thought people liked him? Yeah, I thought people in America liked him anyway. I mean, neoliberals like him. People that like Hillary Clinton. People that like, you know, Barack Obama. People that like the Democratic establishment gotcha. like gotcha. him. Um, because he's a corporate chill just like they are. And <laughs> so he decided he overruled the parliament through like some like. It's kind of like a doomsday means, you know, like only for dire emergencies. Nuclear and, option. And the people in France are fucking going crazy. How fucking they dare know you. how to riot. How fucking dare you do some shit like that? Who the fuck voted you in with the intention of you raising the fucking retirement age? No. Where do you get the fucking balls no. to do something like that? Well, he's being paid by corporations yeah, to do fucking that. Fucking ridiculous. He's like, well, you know, people are living longer, and well, so we should work longer. Yeah. So pay. So how about you pay people more money? Fucking how about ridiculous. like you know, you Fucking force ridiculous. corporations to pay more in taxes? How about that, yeah, you scumbags? Yeah, yeah. Why don't you go find some Gibeonites to fucking do that work for you? All right. Mm-hmm. I will tell you this though, to the people of France. <sighs> If anyone in France is listening to us right now, if you're not I all tuckered we, out from rioting. I believe, I believe, maybe they're rioting because of the show. They're like, get this fucking shitty American shit off our fucking podcast. Apps. That'd be awesome. Um, maybe enough with the fucking afternoon like siestas. You know, like closing shop from like two o'clock until five o'clock. You want to revitalize an economy. Maybe like the afternoon hours are like decent hours no, to make don't, money. Don't don't doesn't like Greece do that as well? Italy does that as well. Yeah, yeah. and those are shitty economies. <laughs> yeah, but they Italy live, and Gre- Italy, but they, Greece, but they, but they live longer. Has... They live longer. They got better lifespans. Do they live longer? I think so. It's also their diet. Their, diet, their Mediterranean diet has been favored. You okay, know, for like longevity. For I a long will time. say this: living longer does not equate. To wanting to live that long. <laughs> All Listen, right. Living long, it means they live to 90, dude. They're not 140. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, I would rather live to 75 comfortably mm-hmm. than live to 90 miserably. Think about what you're saying, though. So you're going to work till you're 64 and then have 11 years of declining health to like celebrate your accomplishments? As opposed to what? As opposed to working as, I don't know, <laughs> working to 62. <laughs> Every year counts. Why? What? Sixty four? Isn't that what they raised it to? Sixty four. They're trying to. They're raising the retirement age to sixty four. Yes. And what was it? But you said they live until they're ninety. Yeah. Whatever. You're said, mixing but, uh, up yeah, like the retirement yeah, ages. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm so you're saying up. I work until I'm sixty five. I die, let's say, at seventy five. So I only had ten years to enjoy yeah. my retirement. Yeah. Okay. But I have ten years to enjoy a retirement with like a full, not a full pension. But so when I left I no the New pension. York City DOE, I left vested, so I have a pension. But it's I'm not fully vested. I am fully vested, but I don't. I'm not going to have like as big a pension as I would have if I obviously yeah, continued yeah, course, to work yeah. there, right? Um, but I also have um, investments. I have 401ks from previous jobs. I have a 403b from that job. Look at you. Um, so we will be okay. You know, we own property, so we will be okay in our retirement for 10 years, right? We can travel. We can do things. Okay. As opposed to if I'm in Greece, I make no money, but I get to retire at 62 and then live the rest of my life on like pennies, basically. Mm. While entitlements are being taken away. So now I get to live for 30 years, but I get to stay like in my shack. Which you loved out anyway. You spent three hours during the workday sleeping and drinking wine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's racist. <laughs> you just said this is what happened there. There, Everyone knows it's feta cheese, olive oil, and... It's good for the arteries, man. Ouzo. Good for the arteries. In Greece. Ouzo? Ouzo. Orzo. Uzo and Anise. No, Anise is Italian. Uzo. Oh, they drink Uzo liqueur, in Greece, liqueur. man. I was thinking, I was thinking, I was thinking no, Orzo. No, it's not a like liqueur. Rest. It's Uzo? a fucking straight up like 80 proof liquor, bro. Is it? Yes. Mm. You mm. ever have Anise? Anise? Well, there's Anise and Anise. Uh, I don't know which one I had, but. It's all the same. It's yeah, like black like, licorice. Yeah, yeah, I had all that shit. Yeah. 
fucking hate it. It's awful. It's fucking awful. I also realize I don't know half of what I'm talking about in terms of like pensions and retirement. <laughs> I just, <laughs> just, I'm just barreling through that shit. Well, I'll tell you this. As someone who worked for a long time for a major corporation that had plenty of money, corporate America fucking stole my pension. So I don't have a fucking pension. Fuck that, man. So I don't give a fuck. Burn that whole fucking country down. Well, and then burn this whole country down too. Except you know where I live. They 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 didn't entirely steal your pension, right? Like you had a choice, didn't you? Yeah. Well, listen, th- I'll tell you what happened, man. Real quick, not to bore people to death, but I was well into a 23, 24 year career at the point with uh, Verizon. I'm just gonna call them out, motherfucking Verizon. <laughs> and they decided their management team no longer needed the pensions that they offered us to entice us to come onto the management side. So they gave us all these benefits and everything. You know, if I, you, you you go for a job for the whole package, and then they slowly whittled away the package. So I was like, you know what? I want to go back to my old job. And they're like, you don't like it? Quit. That's the problem when so, you leave a union, right? When you leave a, a union, leave a union. Yeah, it becomes so, a right to work situation. So what, I'm, so what I'm going to hear though, what I'm going to hear a lot of feedback from people that I know because I've heard this. Scott, nobody told you to left the union. Leave the union, like, but. I didn't just leave the union like like you know for for no reason. I was made a job offer that had certain benefits and perks. Sure. That in the end were taken away. Right. And it should have been like almost illegal to do that, or at least let me retreat back to my old job. I understand that you know. Let me ask you this: no, When man. you no, left, man. Wait, fuck corporate America, man. When you left the union to take that job, did you know that they could? change whatever. That's change what everybody said. You know, they could do this, you could do that. In the 100 years of the com- history of the company, that had never been done. Right. So it was just like scare, fear monger. Hey, you don't want to do that because this could happen. And fuck, it happened. Right. You know? And they said, oh, look, we can get away with it. And they've continued to do it. And other companies have followed suit. And they're all doing the same shit. Fuck corporate America. Yeah. Fuck your 60-hour work week. Your 64 fucking retirement. So the problem, <sighs> again, the problem has become everything. Every quarter, every three months, when they have a shareholder meeting and they have an earnings call, these companies always have to fucking show a rise in their stock price. Yeah. And it yeah. never used to be like that. Yeah. It never used to be like that. A stock could be steady and it would be fine and healthy yeah. and robust. Yeah. And then maybe they'd even pay a dividend after a while. Yeah. Stock wouldn't move. Now it's like... They're constantly having to cut the workforce or like cut this or cut that in order to show on their balance sheet that they've made like a profit to justify like their stock market price, their market cap. Yo, these companies, salute, these companies are not worth what their market caps are. Of course they're not. They worth shit is what they're worth. They worth shit. Like Apple is worth what? Uh, one point five trillion dollars. To first of all, who, no one's got one point five trillion dollars, so Apple ain't worth that because no one's got that to buy fucking Apple. So it's like an imaginary number, you know? Not Silicon Valley Bank, right? <laughs> I mean, come on, how many more banks are gonna fail? How many more bailouts are they gonna be? It's a yeah. fucking mess. Yeah. I want to ask you this before we get into the show. Yeah. One more thing. One more topic to bring yeah. up, unless you have something. I got me. nothing, man. I got nothing but anger, and bu- furious anger. <laughs> That's great because this is going. This might spark that furious yeah. anger, or maybe, maybe it'll do the opposite. Maybe it'll spark some joy. Your question that you're about to ask, or the Bible that we're going to read. The question that I'm about oh, okay. to ask. All right, let's hear okay. it. The topic. All right. It has been widely reported <laughs> that this coming Tuesday. Yeah. Donald Trump uh-huh. will be arrested. <laughs> how okay, do you feel about that? Uh, how do I feel about it? All right. Obviously, as an American, looking out at the out, the rest of the world, part of me would wish we would never, ever arrest one of our former presidents. Because, like, what the fuck? But then a much bigger part of me is like... Well, I want you to think wait, that... A much bigger part of me would be like, how the fuck can we not arrest somebody if they're a criminal, regardless of who the fuck they were? So I think it sends a worse message to the world. I know everybody thinks Biden's the embarrassment on the world stage. Um, but everyone I think, thinks that. Everyone thinks everyone that. Everyone thinks everyone Biden thinks is that. the... Earlier, everyone thought Macron was, like, great, but the same people <laughs> think Biden is the worst. I don't know. Okay. So I'm just saying it would look really bad. It would just it would just prove, like, the rich get, get richer and get away with everything. There's rules for thee and rules for me. And, no, fuck that, man. You committed a crime. You got to go. You got to go. Right. 
My man did 11 hard years in, fe- in state prisons for some reason for robbing banks. Yeah. By the way, it's a whole other story why only did 10 years after 18 banks. We'll talk, talk about that some other time. Do you know what? So my understanding is the New York district attorney, or not the district attorney, the special prosecutor or whatever, they met with Secret Service last week. The witch hunters, yeah. And so the reason that they met with the Secret Service, who's the witch hunters? The Anybody going after Trump? Oh, okay. Because I mentioned two different groups of people, and then after that, you were like the witch hunters. They're all witch so I'm hunters. I'm just trying. I'm just Scott. You sorry, say sorry. I don't sorry. listen to I'm you, sorry. I'm and sorry. then when I do listen to you no. and I ask you follow up questions, oh, I'm cranked up, man. There's no, there's no, there's right. no uh, fair enough. There's no uh, need to answer me, ask me fair questions. Enough. Man. What are you like a nasal spray or something? <laughs> What's <laughs> no, going no, no, on? No, Benadryl. I just took a sip of alcohol for the first time. Um, okay, so they met with the Secret Service because they're trying to establish a protocol. For arresting Donald Trump. That's what was leaked to the press. They're yeah. meeting with the Secret Service so that they can work out an arrangement of how this will happen. Because it's never fucking happened before. Yeah. Yeah. A, a president has never been fucking arrested before. He said he was going to do things that no other president had done before. <laughs> so then he came out a few days later basically urging like his supporters to fucking riot because he's going to be arrested on Tuesday. So mm. he's like, take to the streets and protest and blah, 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 blah. Okay. Do you know what this particular arrest is? From what I understand, it's kind of annoying. Actually, this has, this has to do with the Stormy Daniels payoff, and yes. it, but it was but specifically because it financed. Um, it was it violated, violated election finance rules. Okay. Right. Perfect. Yeah. It violated election finance rules. Okay. I know. What, okay. Good. No, I mean that's it. Like, and so, you know what people will respond with? Every president has violated those every rules. President, right. Right, okay. Every, every president was better at it than you. Okay. Right. So, <laughs> question. Trump announced his campaign in 2015, and the election was in 2016. We are mm. now in 2023. It's seven years later, okay? Oh, Is there any reason why it took seven years? Your stomach all right? Yeah, that's just weird. <laughs> Is there any reason why it took seven years to bring about this particular, like, prosecution. Yeah. Seven fucking years. Yeah. Because he wasn't an unarmed black man at a traffic stop. They took their goddamn time, right? Of course. And now they're bringing this to trial, like, when? Like, right when he's running his, he's starting to run oh, the optics his campaign good. for, like. Yeah, the optics aren't well, good. Well, the optics aren't good because it's all bullshit. Mm. Now, I agree with MAGA's. The fact that, like, he had... Editing out anything you say past this point. (laughs) (laughs) Um, The fact that he is being charged over the Stormy Daniels hush payments, right? I mean, that's not what he should be charged over. What he should be charged over is his criminal fucking activity in the White House where he was grifting for money with foreign fucking countries... Dude, maybe this is just the beginning. Selling them arms in exchange for stays at his hotel, in exchange for deals with his fucking scumbag son-in-law and his disgusting daughter, who everybody's in love with on both sides of the aisle because, oh, she's the smart one. She's like the sensible one. She's a piece of shit just like the rest of them. She's more dangerous because you fucking like her. Yeah. We're going to get right back to the show. But before we do, we'd like to invite you to come visit our Patreon. Each week, we discuss a new topic at the intersection of society and religion. We explore the encroachment of religion onto secular institutions, such as schools, workplaces, and government. In addition, we'll investigate whether religion practices what it preaches. So, after this episode, head on over to patreon.com slash libel to bible and join in the conversation. And now, back to the show. So... On the one hand, I agree with you. Justice needs to be served. On mm. the other hand, it's kind of like the circumstances under which this is taking place and why it's taking place. Like the charges are fucking nonsense. <laughs> and here's the real problem, Scott. This is the problem we all have to face as, as a country now. There's going to come a time where, you know, someone on the other side... Sure. Is sure. going to face criminal prosecution frivolously. Sure. And this is going to be used as an example or a precedent sure. for why you could do that. That's why when I looked at what this was about, I was like, just let this one go. 
I hate to say it. Let this yep. one go. Get him on something substantial. I'm serious. Unless this is like, this is going to set the stage for how the other people are going to arrest him after this. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, the only time he might get out of jail is to go to other court hearings for other charges that are brought up. That's how many crimes this man has probably committed. I mean... And it's not because I'm an anti-Trump guy yeah. or a pro-Obama guy or a pro-Biden guy. It's This guy's a fucking criminal, man. Come on, knock it off. He was a real estate developer in New York for like 40, 50 years. Yeah, seems, he, he seems legit. <laughs> he's a criminal. There's not a single real estate developer in New York who's not a criminal. Yeah. Who didn't deserve to spend some time in the fucking clink. Yeah. Fucking clink. Um, so, I mean, really, f- fuck Trump, but not over this. Yeah, agreed. Okay. Especially if this ends up being the only thing he ever gets charged with. Yeah. You know, if, if more shit's coming down the pike, then fine. Right. But if this is what, like, this right. is what Like, if there's him. more finance crimes, maybe there's more. Maybe what's leaked is, like, only the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. There's a funny uh, Seth Rogen. That's the fat comedian, Seth Rogen, right? Uh, Not Joe Rogan. Yeah, Seth Rogen. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So Seth Rogen, he has a funny story. Like, at all these Hollywood parties, he would, like, hear, like, all these stories. And he had met Stormy Daniels making a movie. I forgot what movie he mentioned. Doesn't matter. He was making a movie. Was Stormy Daniels was there. And what? Was it a porno? Yeah, Seth Rogen was making oh, a porno. Oh, I thought Stormy Daniels was making the movie. Seth Rogen was making a movie. <laughs> And Stormy Daniels was there for whatever reason. And, oh, it was Knocked Up. He was making, it was during the filming of Knocked Up. Sounds like a porno. And Stormy Daniels was telling him about, like, all these celebrities that she's had sex with. And she was like, you'll never believe who else I had sex with. And he was like, who? And she was like, Donald Trump. And he was like, and I was like, no, that's very believable to me. (laughs) And he's, like, telling the story now. But he's like, this was in the past. And he's like, and I never thought twice about it again. Because, like, Donald Trump having sex with, like, a porn star was totally on brand for him. You know, and then when, like, he started running for president, I had forgotten about it until, like, the Stormy Daniels thing broke. I had to say, Stormy Daniels to me was a non-news story when it happened and still a non-news story. Well, it's a it's a new story in that a lot of his support is the evangelical base, and here's this guy who's paying a porn star yeah, to yeah, fuck him yeah, while his wife yeah. had just given birth to their son. You know what I'm his third <laughs> wife had just given uh, birth uh, yeah. to his son. You know, so three baby mamas, yeah. porn stars. <laughs> Hush payments. So I would say it's a new story in so far as like his supporters, mm. yeah, being hypocrites. Yeah. Speaking of hypocrites, <laughs> <laughs> the Bible that, that brings us to the Midianite oppression. <laughs> the Midianite oppression. So um, so last week we did we did a new a no prep thing. A no prep thing. And we wouldn't say no prep. I would just say oh, I didn't do any prep. <laughs> I would just say we wanted to see uh, what the show would sound like if we didn't read our chapters ahead of time and we just yeah. read them on air and reacted live in real time. So yeah, so the only problem I have is like neither one of us listened to that episode, so we don't know how it worked out. Yeah, we haven't like sat down to edit it, but we're yet. doing it again. <laughs> well, we're, we're fucking do ballsy. It again. We got balls, right? We do. Yeah, we do. Well, look, ultimately, I thought there were some problems with the episode. Like, for example, like knowing when to stop, like reading, you know, like you could stop because you wanted to say something. But then like the next like sentence or two might add even more. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know if this is going to be a format we're going to go forward with for any length of time, because now it seems like a little daunting that we have to like read this now. Does it? To me, it does. It's way more daunting the other way to me. Uh, yeah, you, 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 get, you get stressed out and stuff. So how do you want to do this? You want to just, you want to just read it? Start reading it? How do, you how do I want to do it? How do we want to do this, man? Well, I, I thought we'd read. <laughs> and then... <laughs> out loud, right? We're and, out reading and then out loud, we dis- right? And then we discuss. <clears throat> and then, you know, we would look at the time and say, oh, do you want to do another chapter? All right. So, we could uh, do that, right? Judges 6, the Midianite, uh, the Midianite op- oppression. All right. So just as a reminder... um. Judges are the people that Yahweh puts into place in order to straighten out the Israelites who invariably, after each each successive judge dies, go back to their, you know, evil ways or whatever. I don't even know how to describe it. Oh, you don't have to because the very first sentence, the Israelites did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. So they're evil. And the Lord gave them into the hand of Midian seven years. Okay. So they, they, they fucked around again. I just think, again, this is just, 
this is just what goes on. Like you said back then, you conquer a land, then you get conquered. Then you conquer it back, and then you get conquered. It's just, this, is, this is the way shit went, went down over there. Here's what's going on, Scott. Let's be fucking up front. All these fucking Israelites, at the time that this book is being written, they're like, yo, if we have to follow Yahweh, right? If Yahweh is this man that we need to be following or God, how about all those times like in the past that we kept being like fucking oppressed? So then the council got together like, yo, we we do. We got to explain like how come like we've got this whole history of oppression. So they wrote this fucking book and they were like, well, the reason that Yahweh oppressed you, it, you weren't oppressed. Yahweh did that on purpose because you were evil. Right. So during this period of time, Midian fucking took over, you know, in this period of time, you acted up and this person. T- so this is all justification after the fact for why they should follow Yahweh. <sighs> like it's so it's, it's so obvious, right? It's obvious. But then again, I'm a 21st century man. I don't know. Maybe you know. Maybe back then it wasn't so obvious. The hand of Midian prevailed over Israel. And because of Midian, the Israelites provided for themselves hiding places in the mountains, caves, and strongholds. So they were, they were scurrying around like rats. I'm pretty sure every single Jewish holiday ever is them surviving like in a cave or whatever when they thought imminent death was certain. They, they actually say like almost those exact words in Family Guy. How come every Jewish holiday is them running from somebody? Every single one. <laughs> For whenever the Israelites put in seed, the Midianites and the Amal- Amal- Amalekites? Amalekites and the people of the East would come up against them. They would encamp I'm against sorry. them. Yep. I, think, I think you rushed over that. All right. I think you need to read that sentence, but sexier. I'm not describing seed as how you're describing no, 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 go ahead. seed. Read that, but sexy. I, I, come on, I don't do the voice. I'll do it. I'll you do, do it. it. All right. For whenever the Israelites put in seed, the Midianites and the Amalekites and the people of the East would come up against them. All right. So we, we're, I'm sure they're not talking about you know their seed. They're talking about crops. What about the like, come? Come hmm. up against them. Well, they didn't spell it in the traditional. <laughs> I'm <gooey> saying <laughs> the Midianites. The Amalekites and the people of the East would come up against them. Uh, all right. They would come up against them. Yeah. Right. I have nothing to add, man. What else do you want to add? I'm just saying. See what you're saying, man. They would encamp against them and destroy the produce of the land. Ah, that just destroyed your whole... Uh, unless the produce of the land, after planting this seed... You're right, Scott. It babies. just destroyed my joke. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> what was I thinking by joking around like that? Maybe. Thanks. But, but thanks wait, for pointing out. But wait, I, I listen. But wait, maybe the seed is exactly in the commas what you're talking about, and they would destroy the produce of the land. That's the babies that they made. The produce of the land. It's, the, it's like the fruit of the womb. Yes. Loom. Yes. Something. So mine was ridiculous, but your explanation. No, it backs up yours. Oh, okay. After you shit all over it. <laughs> <laughs> as far as the neighborhood of Gaza, and leave no sustenance in Gaza. Israel, nor any sheep or ox or donkey. Mm. You know Gaza is the world's largest open-air prison? It's not that one uh, that dickhead in Arizona has? I don't know what that is. The Maricopa County guy? That that's has a, the that's a real prison. Would, Gaza's not like really a prison. It's just it's called the world's largest open air prison oh. because the people of Gaza are trapped. They they can't oh, go anywhere. There's I nowhere see. for them to go. I see, you're making some political comments, man. Correct. Scott. On a show that we try not to do shit like that, man. I'm sorry. I'm gonna warn you next time. I might get all intellectual and shit. <laughs> for they and their livestock would come up, Ooh. and they would even bring their tents as thick as locusts. Neither they nor their camels could be counted, so they wasted the land as they came in. Thus, Israel was greatly impoverished because of Midian, and the Israelites cried out to the Lord for help. Again. <laughs> again. Where is he? Oh, so again, it's very vague about what evil means. It doesn't say. To me, evil might just means probably they stopped really caring about Yahweh. They stopped paying tribute to Yahweh. They fell into a life of, like, happiness, you know, amongst the Midians, Midianites, you know, probably intermarrying. You know, they diversified. They got tolerant. Yeah. Yeah. They expanded their gene pool. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You know what they mean. You know, mutts are the smartest dogs. Purebreds oh, tend that. to be like dumb. Duh. I'm a purebred. Duh. When the Israelites cried to the Lord on account of the Midianites, the Lord sent a prophet to the Israelites, and he said to them, 
Thus says the Lord. Oh, this is the prophet speaking. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel. I led you up from Egypt and brought you out of the house of slavery. And I delivered you from the hand of the Egyptians and from the hand of all who oppressed you and drove them out before you and gave you their land. And I said to you, I am the Lord, your God. You shall not pay reverence to the gods of the Amorites in whose land you live, but you have not given heed to my voice. Yeah, so I'm right. He's basically jealous. He is a jealous God after all. So I want to say this. When you started talking in the God voice, but you realized it was the prophet, mm -hmm. but the prophet was relaying God's message. So you could have been the prophet doing God's voice. Oh. You could have been like double impressions in. Oh, like two that's impressions layered, in. man. Yeah. That's meta. Speaking of layers, why is this double bracketed, this whole paragraph? Maybe it's because exactly of what you said. Uh, maybe. Maybe it's because it's it's like, it's Inception, bro. It's it's an impression inside of an impression <sighs> inside of an impression. I have a headache thinking about that. So I'm going to say this. Isn't it a good chance this prophet is just someone who was like, yo, man, we got to fix ourselves, man. We got to build ourselves back up. So he comes down out of some mountain, pretending he talked to God, just to rally the people up. Like, he's a good leader. Yes. Right? So he, maybe he didn't even talk to God. I also think now, prophet, right? That's that's a racist slur against Jewish people, right? It's always <laughs> about prophet, right? Yes. Like, it can't just be a discount. It's always prophet. Uh, yeah. I see what the Bible's doing. <laughs> I see what they're doing. That brings us to the call of Gideon. Oh, no. The hair blows it now. Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the oak at Oprah. Well, why? <laughs> Go ahead, Oprah. I was going to say, is, is God going to show himself? Was this prophet just making up? Now, now this angel came down to Oprah. Why would, the, why would the angel sit? Is it tired? Was it a long journey? It's a big ladder. Uh, under the oak at Oprah, which belonged to You think it Joash, came down a ladder? He had to, right? They all come down ladders. Nah, man. It's, no. G well, that Jacob saw like an escalator or something. Right, he ladder. called it a ladder. Yeah. I'm thinking it's it's probably like a fire pole. A fire pole would be more fun. Or a transporter beam, like like Star Trek kind of thing. Scott, I'm trying to be realistic over right. here, and you're doing that transporter you're right. beam. You're right. You're right. I mean, what are we talking yes. about? Yeah. It's a 1,400-mile-long <laughs> fire pole <laughs> into space. Oh, 1,400. Oh, because heaven is 1,400 miles up, I don't know right? where it is. I don't know. You've been there? I ain't been there. I know it's not 1,400 miles uh, up. How do you know it's not in a layer between like something below 1,400 and something above 1,400? That would be my guess. My uh, guess would be would be like interdimensional rip in space time. So we, this angel sat under the oak, which belonged to Joash the Abizarite. I don't Abizarite, know why we need that information. As his son Gideon was beating out wheat in the wine press <laughs> well, I'll bet that's to hide it from the Midianites. <laughs> that's what he was beating out and hiding. <laughs> <laughs> the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, the Joes, <laughs> what are you doing in there? I'm combing my hair. <laughs> Beating my wheat. <laughs> How long are you going to be combing your hair? The water's running all day. <laughs> the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty warrior, you. Gideon answered him, But sir, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? You know, are we still going to ask this question? <sighs> and he doesn't know. He's busy yeah, yeah, yeah. beating wheat. And where are all his wonderful deeds that our ancestors recounted to us, recounted to us, saying, "Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt?" Let's can we keep stop running that fucking line? You know, like that's you're beating that to death. It's like thousands of years now at this point, right? But now the Lord has cast us off and given us into the hand of Midian. Then the Lord turned to him and said, "Go in this might of yours and deliver Israel from the hand of Midian. I hereby commission you." He responded, but sir, these guys are pretty polite, huh? This Gibeon guy? Listen, he's being offered a job, mm. and he is asking questions. Well, you know what I mean? He's but At least he's, in a polite way, though. Yes. But sir, how can I deliver Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. The Lord said to him, but I will be with you, and you shall strike Stop. down the Midianites. Is it the Lord said to him or the it angel? It went from the, Lord, the angel to the Lord. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm just I just no. like to point out these yeah. like, you know, inconsistencies and accuracies. But I will be with you, and you shall strike down the Midianites, every one of them. Then he said to him, If now I have found favor with you, then show me a sign that is you who speak with me. 
Who, 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 wait, wait. He, he then he said it to him. So the guy, whoever this, right, uh, okay. then Joseph or whatever his name is, Joe's. Why can't it be a normal fucking name? Right, it's like Bob, Josh, <laughs> Joe Ash. Do not depart from here until I come to you and bring out my present and set it before you. And he said, "I will stay until you return." All right, the 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 the, 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 the way they're writing it, it's kind of hard to tell who's saying what. But apparently, Gibeon was like, "Dude, I'm not leaving here until you give me some proof to bring to these people." And God was like, hang on, I'll be right back. I got to get something for you. Mm-hmm. He's like, all right, I'll wait for you. Gideon, right. I'm sorry. That's Gideon. Josh is the, is the father, and Gideon is. Yeah, and like you said, we didn't even need to know that guy's name. The wheat beater. <laughs> right. That's what I'm saying. It's all confusing. Just say Gideon. Yeah. Unless there's going to be another Gideon, and we need to distinguish yeah. that Gideon with Gideon, the son of Josh. Well, as soon as as soon as this Gideon does something different, he might change his name. You know, as soon as he does something. So Gideon went into his house. And prepared a kid and unleavened cakes from an ephah of flour. I don't know what that is, an ephah. Is that a amount of flour? Of yeah. The meat he put in a basket and the broth he put in a pot and brought them to him under the oak and presented them. Him is lowercase. So I'm assuming oh, him is the right, angel. Yep. The angel of God said to him, take the meat and the unleavened cakes and put them on this rock and pour out the broth. And he did so. Then the angel of the Lord reached out the tip of the staff that was in his hand and touched the meat (laughs) and the unleavened cakes. And fire sprang up from the rock and consumed the meat and the unleavened cakes. And the angel of the Lord vanished from his sight. So basically, he's performing like a fucking David Copperfield trick, you know? Like a Doug Henny trick. Right. So the guy that walked away wasn't wasn't the Lord to come back with proof. The guy walked away to... Wow, okay. Then Gideon perceived that it was the angel of the Lord, and Gideon said, Help me, Lord God, for I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. So because he, like, consumed the offerings and fire and, like, disappeared, that's what made him... He's a believer now. Okay. Um, (laughs) but (laughs) But the Lord said to him, Peace be to you. Do not fear. You shall not die. Then Gideon built an altar there to the Lord and called it, The Lord is Peace. To this day, it still stands at Oprah, which belongs to the Abba's rights. Okay, so he went, he got got some kid, um, another fucking unleavened cake. We haven't heard about unleavened shit in a while. Mm -hmm. So he brings the broth. And this guy just pours it out. Like, dude, I worked all day on that. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> on, on a rock, no less. Not even into the soil, you know? Just onto a dead rock. So a it's mineral. O- so it's obvious his broth wasn't broth. This was some sort of flammable substance that he fucking sparked. So I'm just saying this trick's not even that impressive. No, not at all. No. It's not an impressive trick. No. Um, Just so we get this straight. The name of the book is Judges. So we're reading about the people who brought, like, the Israelites out of oppression um, periodically during this yes. this time period, right? Let's say it's over 100 years, 300 years, whatever it was, okay? Okay. Why do we need this whole backstory? Like, why do we need the detail of the soup and the broth and him? You in know other what? words, In other words, I'm sorry. Yeah. We've already been introduced to two or three other judges. We didn't get their origin story. Why are we getting this guy's origin story? And it's not even that interesting. Um, He's a rube. You're right. Until I just started scanning down a little further. This is the this is the difference in the live show. Like we don't know what's coming next, but I just scanned down a couple of sentences. Now I know why we're hearing his story. All right, let's go. That night, the Lord said to him, "Take your father's bull, the second bull, seven years old, and pull down the altar of Baal." that belongs to your father, and cut down the sacred pole that is beside it, and build an altar to the Lord your God on top of the stronghold here in proper order. Then take the second bull and offer it as a burnt offering with the wood of the sacred pole that you cut down. <sighs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be you now. <laughs> All right. And I am going to say, what the fuck? Why did his father <laughs> Go ahead. have an altar of Baal? What? <laughs> You had one <laughs> fucking rule. The first commandment is thou shalt not have any other gods before me. Like, uh, what the fuck? Yeah, I don't know, man. What ba- is wrong with these people? Baal ba- seems to have a, a devoted following. 
He's definitely he's definitely whispering in people's ears over and over it again. It seems like, like Baal comes through, right? Ooh. It seems like Baal comes through for. Oh, well, yeah, because they're happy for a while. They're not happy until they get conquered. <sighs> they're not paying attention to God for a long time before they get conquered. I'm so so they angry have... by these people now. Now you're in my head. <laughs> <laughs> so Gideon took ten of his servants and did as the Lord told him. But because he was too afraid of his family and the townspeople to do it by day, he did it by night. Ooh, so it's like the Boston Tea Party, yo. Yeah. They're gonna, oh, dr- they're gonna dress up as like Bedouins and go and fucking wreck yeah. Baal. Real, real, real tough taking down your Robert E. Lee sta- statue at night. <laughs> what do you think Baal looks like? I would like a description of Baal. You think Baal is like a goat horned, like you know? Nah, I think he's, I think he's like, like a, a person. I think he's, he's a Han Solo looking guy. You think so? Ooh, yeah, cool just like yeah. a cool dude. Yeah. 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 Yeah, maybe like a Billy D. Fuck that. He's he's, he's like um, Billy D. Williams. You're he's saying. a what the hell was a Lando Calrissian? Lando Calrissian. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right. I like it. <laughs> uh, so you want to talk to, about to us about Gideon destroys the altar of Baal? Sure. Um, Judges six verse twenty eight. Oh, we didn't mention that either. Like people could read along with us. Like we are reading. They could be reading along with us. We're uh, doing the new revised. That's right. Standard version, updated edition. We're on BibleGateway.com. This is Judges 6. We're on verse 28. So pause right now. Go open up BibleGateway.com. Judges 6. We're on verse 28. And here I go. No, we'll wait. We'll wait. <laughs> no, they can pause. All right, they can. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess we could wait. You want to wait? Let's yeah, I'll wait. describe. Let's I, wait. I, I, Let's I, wait. I'm actually drinking... Um... Casamigos Blanco tequila. Just drinking oh, straight tequila. tequila wow, tonight. nice. All right. It's white. White tequila. Oh, that makes it all right? When I it's heard white, that it's all right? There's another version of tequila, but it's not tequila. Mezcal. You mezcal. ever drink mezcal? Yeah, it's from the same. I think they're both It's also the Mexican. They're both from the agave plant, I believe. Mm-hmm. I hear it's not bad, mezcal. I've never really had it. I think mezcal is actually the one with the worm in it, isn't it? Not the I tequila. Don't I don't know. All right. Well, we're glad you went and got your Bibles open. Oh, yeah, I just got a text that they're, they're, they're online. They let you know, yes. Yep. Here we go. Gideon destroys the altar of Baal. When the townspeople rose early in the morning, the altar of Baal was broken down, and the sacred pole beside it was cut down, and the second bull was offered on the altar that had been built. So they said to one another, Who has done this? After searching and inquiring, Gideon said, I ain't seen nothing. And they were like, you ain't seen nothing because you was doing something. <laughs> nah. So they nah. said to one another, who has done this? You didn't see shit because you was doing shit. After searching and inquiring, they were told, Gideon, son of Josh, did it. So Rack. what was the point of doing it in the middle of the night so no one could see? If the first thing someone says in the morning is you're like, yo, I saw that motherfucker. Uh, wait, wait, wait. In, in, in good defense. It said after searching and inquiring. Okay. So there was, you know, it wasn't just like, right. they didn't get ratted out so right So his away. crew wasn't that tight then. Someone ratted. Uh, maybe somebody saw them. Somebody was out for a cigarette in the middle of the night. Someone squealed, man. After oh. searching and inquiring, they were told, Gideon, son of Josh, did it. Then the townspeople said to Josh, bring out your son so that he may die. <laughs> for he has pulled down the altar of Baal and cut down the sacred pole beside it. But Josh said to all who were arrayed against him, Will you contend for Baal, or will you defend his cause? Whoever contends for him shall be put to death by morning. If he is a god, let him contend for himself, because his altar has been pulled down. Therefore, on that day, Gideon was called Jerobal. That is to say, let Baal contend against him, because he pulled down his altar. So I was kidding. They, They just changed his name? Gideon was, got his name changed to Jeroboam? So I'm going to say this. I don't think it's so much a name change. Like a title? As much as like a nickname that he was known as from that day on. You know what I mean? So like Daryl Strawberry is the straw. Yeah. You know, or Dwight Gooden is Doc. Okay, all right, fair enough. All right, so so this from is that the, day okay. forward, he was Dr. K. Yeah. You know what I mean? Nobody's like, he changed his name to Dr. K? Yeah. So that's just what, you know, people right, call Good him. enough, good enough. Then... All the Midianites and the Amalekites and the people of the East came together. I like that. That's that's nice. Kumbaya, my lord. That's not what I th- came away with. I mean, oh. They came together. Oh. And they crossed over and encamped in the Valley of Jezreel. 
But the Spirit of the Lord took possession of Gideon, and he sounded the trumpet, and the Abizrites were called out to follow him. He sent the messengers throughout all Manasseh, and they too were called out to follow him. He also sent messengers to Asher, Zebulon, and Naphtali, and they went up to meet him. I want to back up to the last reading. I like jo- Josh's freaking reactions, like, yo, go kill your son because they wrecked the, he wrecked the thing. And he was like, what the fuck, dude? If Baal's a god, let him fucking deal with himself. What the fuck? You're going to kill my son? Fuck you. Yeah. I liked it. He kind of stood up to the crowd. So he's basically telling them, stop simping for fucking Baal. Yeah. Baal right, can fucking take Baal, care of himself. Baal, come. come. Yeah. They're knocking down your altar. What the yeah. fuck are you going to do about yeah. it? Hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Good, yeah. good on dad. Good on dad. The sign of the fleece. The sign of the fleece. Then Gideon said to God, do, do they refer to God like that? Sometimes they do. They usually It's usually the capital Lord, H-I, the Lord, but God. straight God? All right. Yeah, I think so. I'll have to do a search through the Bible and see if God is mentioned. It's definitely <laughs> been mentioned, bro. Then Gideon said to God, in order to see whether you will deliver Israel by my hand, as you have said, I am going to lay a fleece of wool on the threshing floor. If there is dew on the fleece alone, and it is dry on all the ground, then I shall know that you will deliver Israel by my hand, as you have said. I'm sorry. That's a bad test. So, (laughs) yesterday, Gideon was, like, all afraid. Yeah. Today, he's, like, making demands, and very specific demands of God, saying, oh, if you want to prove that you're going to help me defeat all of these armies, do this in order to prove it. I, maybe it was because he was doing it in front of a crowd. He was more like he already had he his was playing towards the crowd. Yeah, he wanted the crowd to understand that like he, he, God was his man. He already so, had like one like victory over Baal, so now he's like feeling himself. He's but he's got to convince everybody else. Yeah. So he took this fleece and he wet, he wet it and he went out on a dry day. Right, they're in the fucking desert, right? And he threw it down. He goes, "Oh, look at that! Look, it's wet, but the rest of the ground is dry. This is not even a real <laughs> test." <laughs> I gotta tell you, God's getting lazy with his tricks. Uh, then Gideon said to God, do not let your anger burn against me, but let me speak one more time. Let me please make trial with the fleece just once more. Let it be dry only on the fleece and all the ground let there be dew. Wait, isn't that the opposite? And God did so that night. It was dry on the fleece only and all the ground there was dew. Yeah. So he, he, he flipped it. First the dew was supposed to be on the fleece and the ground was supposed to be dry. And then the... Fleece was dry, and the ground had to be wet. Again, either way, it's a shit test. You don't think anybody in the crowd was like, really? Really, this proves what? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, we can move to the next uh, the next chapter, man. I got to say, man, I am not that impressed with Gideon because I don't see like what makes him a judge and what makes him a great judge and why did God well, choose Gideon? a great Gideon. judge yet. Well, you know, God didn't choose him. This is Gideon speaking for himself, acting like he has communication with God. Because look at these tricks. <laughs> if this thing is wet, you're God. Then he fucked it up. He goes, if it's dry, you're God. <laughs> what the fuck? So, so he's like Donald Trump running for like <laughs> office. And he's like, I spoke to God. God told me everything's going to be all right as long as I'm in charge. Look at this fleece, dude. It's wet. <gasps> wow. <laughs> all right, fair enough. Yeah. So that gets us to Judge of Seven. Mm-hmm. Oh, more Gideon. All right, Judges 7. Gideon surprises and routs the Midianites. Then Jeroboam, that is Gideon, and all the troops who were with him rose early and encamped beside the spring of Harod, and the camp of Midian was north of them, below the hill of Morah in the valley. The Lord said to Gideon, The troops with you are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hand. Israel would only take the credit away from me, saying, My own hand has delivered me. Now, therefore, proclaim this in the hearing of the troops. Whoever is fearful and trembling, let him return home. Thus Gideon sifted them out. 22,000 returned, and 10,000 remained. So he shows up with an army of 32,000, and this Yahweh scumbag is like... You guys are going to win, and I'm not going to get any of the credit. Send some of these fuckers home. Yeah, because you have an overwhelming force. What a piece of shit Yahweh is, he's, huh? He's, he's he needs the fucking credit. What a fucking asshole. Yeah. Then the Lord said to Gideon, The troops are still too many. 
take them down to the water, and I will sift them out for you there. When I say, this one shall go with you, he shall go with you. And when I say, this one shall not go with you, he shall not go. <laughs> All right. I can follow those directions. <laughs> so he brought so he brought the troops down to the water. And the Lord said to Gideon, All those who lap the water with their tongues as a dog laps. <laughs> who did that? You shall put the You shall put the what? All right. Uh, wait a second. There's ten thousand men. Very thirsty men. They just assembled at the fucking river. Mm-hmm. How long would it take to inspect 10,000 men, much less inspect how they're drinking the fucking water? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And who's judging? Like, oh, that one's drinking like a dog. Did he go or- in line and drink? And then he saw how he drank, and he goes, all right, you stand over here. You stand over here. Be one at a time. I don't know. Yeah. Stupid. So all, the- all those who lap the water with their tongues as a dog laps, you shall put to one side all those who kneel down to drink Putting their hands to their mouths, you shall put to the other side. The number of those who lapped was 300, but all the rest of the troops knelt down to drink water. Then the Lord said to Gideon, With the 300 who lapped, I will deliver you and give the Midianites into your hand. Let all the others go to their homes. So the people took provisions in their hands and their trumpets, and he sent all the rest of Israel back to their own tents but retained the 300. The camp of Midian was below him in the valley. What a weird way to choose, like, fucking an army, huh? I'm thinking, take these 300 weirdos with you so if they die, we don't give a shit. Who drinks water like that? So think about God's obsession with cleanliness or holiness. He doesn't want motherfuckers... Dirty hands. ...taking their hands and putting it up to their mouths. That's contamination. He right. likes the fuckers sticking their whole head into the fucking water and I guess drinking. It's cleaner, yeah. I guess maybe. I don't know. It's fucking weird. You what if you re- what if you're really thirsty? Like how like, like, lapping the water like a dog? That's gonna take forever. It's not like they were dog. out in the fucking field for like a year. They literally gathered that morning. So now, when this was going on, did the ten thousand people see the Lord there, or were they just listening to Gideon like make these decisions? The real question is the Midianites. They see 30,000 fucking Israelites. They're like, oh, shit. And then they're like, no, wait a second. Some of them are going home. Some of them are going 30, 10,000. No, there were 30,000. Right, 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 right. They see them. Then they're like, wait a second. Now there's 20,000 of them are fucking leaving. There's only like 10,000 left. Then they're like, wait a second. They're going to where? The the river? What? The river? What? There's Now there's only 300... You understand, like, what is the opposing army thinking this entire time? They're not. They're, they're not. They, 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 they should definitely have spies at this point. <sighs> that same night, the Lord said to him, Get up, attack the camp, for I have given it into your hand. But if you fear to attack, go down to the camp with your servant Parah, and you shall hear what they say, and afterward your hand shall be strengthened to attack the camp. Then he went down with his servant Parah. I guess he didn't, try, he didn't, he didn't feel strong enough. <laughs> He went with his servant Parad to the outpost of the armed men who were in the camp. The Midianites and the uh, Amalekites and all the people of the east lay along the valley as thick as locusts, and their camels were without number, countless as the sand on the seashore. When Gideon arrived... Good thing they only brought 300 men with them. Yeah, yeah. When Gideon arrived, there was a man telling a dream to his comrade, and he said, I had a dream. And in it, a cake of barley bread tumbled into the camp of Midian and came to the tent and struck it so that it fell. It turned upside down and the tent collapsed. And his comrade answered, This is no other than the sword of Gideon, son of Josh, a man of Israel. Into his hand God has given Midian and all the army. So I'm sorry, the metaphor is that like something came and destroyed the camp, like just ran Not- through it like... Like the boulder at the beginning of Raiders of the Lost Star? Yeah, in a cake of barley bread tumbled into the camp and came to the tent and struck it so that it fell. Okay. A cake of barley bread. All right, so let's say a lump of bread hit hit a tent post and knocked the tent over. I would think bread back then is probably pretty tough, you know? I guess. And now is this the Midianite army he's talking to? Yes. He's overhearing, overhearing? It's the, yeah, it's Midianites and Amalekites and all their camels. All right, so... 
right. a lot of camels. Lots are the of camels, camels like laying like low too? Like they're like ambushing as well? Uh, I don't know what the, uh, camels use as like war animals. Well, they're used they carry to the pack, ride the pack on animals yeah. and stuff. But I wonder if they you ride. You can ride. Yes, you ride a camel into war. Yeah. Okay. Yes. You know, from all my extensive military <laughs> history knowledge, <laughs> camels. You know, I mean, listen, I've seen Lawrence of Arabia. I know it goes on. Mm. So when Gideon heard the telling of the dream and its interpretation, I didn't really hear the interpretation. Oh no, he said it was it was a metaphor for the sword. Okay. Mm-hmm. He worshipped, and he returned to the camp of Israel and said, Get up, for the Lord has given the army of Midian into your hand. After he divided the 300 men into three companies and put trumpets into the hands of all of them and empty jars with torches inside the jars, he said to them, Look at me and do the same. When I come to the outskirts of the camp, do as I do. When I blow the trumpet, I and all who are with me, then you also blow the trumpets around the whole camp and shout, For the Lord and for Gideon. I just like how in a matter of two days, Gideon went from like not knowing anything, not trusting the angel of the Lord to like all of a sudden just on his own, like going into the enemy camp, coming back, like leading men. Because you've never seen a wet fleece. <laughs> <laughs> that was the motivation. That's all the motivation. He or a needed. dry fleece. I don't even know what the hell the end result was. No. Scott. Yeah. You had me at fleece. So did they actually narrow down to 300 men because they only had 300 trumpets? Is this the origin of 300? Oh. This is Midian. <laughs> no, I think it would be Gideon in this case. Oh, Gideon. Yeah. <laughs> this is Gideon. Unless this goes wrong. That's good. This, unless this goes this wrong. This is Gideon. So, yeah. So Gideon and the hundred who were with him came to the outskirts of the camp at the beginning of the middle watch. When they had just set the watch, and they blew the trumpets and smashed the jars that were in their hands. So the, <laughs> so the three companies blew the trumpets and broke the jars, holding in their left hands the torches, and in their right hands the trumpets to blow. And they cried, Jews will not replace us. <laughs> Dude, man, you mixed Jews up a lot of stories, Jews will not man. replace us. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that was Charlottesville. But there were good people on both sides. <laughs> both sides, <laughs> So the three companies blew the trumpets and broke the jars, holding in their left hands the torches and in their right hands the trumpets to blow. And they cried, A sword for the Lord and for Gideon. Every man stood in his place all around the camp, and all the men in camp ran. They cried out and fled. When they blew the 300 trumpets, the Lord set every man's sword against his fellow and against all the army, and the army fled as far as Beth Shitta toward Zerara, as far as the border of Abel Mehola by Tabith. And the men of Israel were called out from Naphtali and from Asher and from all Manasseh, and they pursued after the Midianites. What the fuck just happened here? It's a big battle. Okay, but they had jars in one hand and mm-hmm. trumpets in the other. Mm-hmm. Where were the swords? Maybe on their belt? Like on a Every hilt? man uh-huh. stood in his place all around the camp, and all the men in the camp ran. They cried out and fled. So they scared the fuck out of them. Uh, that's pretty funny. <laughs> the <Like, yeah>, ones. <laughs> when, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> when they blew the 300 trumpets, the Lord set every man's sword against his fellow and against all the army, uh-huh. and the army fled. So they, it sounds like they started killing each other. Yeah, okay. Like out of fear, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, they know. They go, you know, like, come in the it was a hypnotic, night. some kind of hypnotic. Yahweh hypnotized them and said, when you hear the trumpets blare, you shall, you know, like yeah, just kill lash yourselves. Out and run, yeah. 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 Mm. It's a dirty trick, man. I mean, Yahweh, you know. You're laying down all of a sudden 300 <laughs> dicks with trumpets. <laughs> Yahweh plays by his own rules. Yeah, I guess. Yes. He's a man of mystery. Then Gideon sent messengers throughout all the hill country of Ephraim, saying, Come down against the Midianites and seize the waters against them, as far as Beth Barah and the Jordan. So all the men of Ephraim were called out, and they seized the waters as far as Beth Barah and the Jordan. They captured the two captains of Midian, Oreb and Zeb. They killed Oreb at the rock of Oreb, and Zeb they killed at the winepress of Zeb. As they pursued the Midianites, they brought the heads of Oreb and Zeb to Gideon beyond the Jordan. Gross. (sighs) 
The next section, Judges 8, is Gideon's Triumph and Vengeance. I think we should uh, save that for uh, the next time. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Yeah, you all right? You sure? Yeah, I guess. Um, And I would also ask everyone who has listened this far to please go to patreon.com slash libel the Bible and answer the poll question at the very top. It's not even a poll. It's just asking for your opinion, you know, and tell us, do you like us reading the Bible ahead of time and discussing it or... Are you liking us reading the Bible live and reacting in real time to everything without notes? How are you liking it? Um, I thought today went better than last time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I, it's, I don't know. Sometimes the jokes are better when I have time to read it at home, mm. you know, because I read it and then reread it. And then the second time I read it, like I'll come up with jokes or I have time to think about it. You're funny has a process. Um, it's a thinking man's funny. You know what I mean? It's a thinking man's right, funny. Right, like, well, you, now, now I'm left with cum jokes. <laughs> I mean, right. <laughs> That's good, Scott. That's good. That's good. How are you liking it? I, I, I got to tell you, I, I don't know. Like, we, I, I felt we were reading a lot of it on air anyway. So I don't think we're, like, losing any time doing this. Mm-hmm. So, um... I kind of like not knowing what's going to happen next, commenting on it, and then finding out the very next sentence what we just said <laughs> didn't mean anything. Right. Like if you just read the next sentence. Right. So you like the spontaneity yeah, of I do. this. Yeah, I do. Well, like I said, I definitely, I, I want to try like, you know, three, four, five episodes and see how it goes, see if we improve, yeah. see if we evolve. Yeah. Maybe we'll do even a combination of the two somehow. I don't know. I don't know, Scott. That's that's the beauty of not getting paid to do this. <laughs> yeah, <what the laughs> no fuck? expectations. Nobody can complain. Call us down to the boss. Nobody office. can say anything. Oh, <laughs> uh, guys, you really haven't been doing your job. Yeah, because not a single motherfucker wants to pay. I don't even work here. <laughs> yeah. So you know what? If you want to fucking complain, pay us. Yeah. Pay us, and then you can complain, and we will take your fucking complaints under advisement. Yeah. What do you think about that? I think uh, see you at patreon.com. And also, we're about to have a really interesting conversation, by the way, on our Patreon. (sighs) Yeah, we are. Where we are about to talk about.